Hello again everybody. Right, on today's video I'm using some footage from the previous video um, which you'll see me putting the door and getting the door knobbing aligned and fitted and welded on but I did skip over the bit where I repaired the door so I thought that would be useful actually I could use that bit because it was just sort of fast forwarded 10 times speed uh, what I was doing but in hindsight I, could, I should have explained a bit more what was going on there so what I've done with this I've reused that bit of video to just um, and that real time mostly I've cut out the, the bits where I'm faffing in between just picking up tools and that but mostly it's in real time of what I was doing and explain along the way so I'm going to voice over uh, and explain what I was doing so hopefully this will be useful and helpful rather than just be skipping over what was uh, a useful repair so hope you enjoy so here we go we got the joking Dremel because you know, the Dremel broke uh, Lost the receipt for that, so I've had to open it up, and as it happens, it's quite an easy fix. So that's, that's repaired and will be seen in the future. So all I'm doing here is using the the, the, the cutter for to remove the rot around the crack that had formed there. Straightforward enough. Just cut it out. There's a couple of ways you can do this. You can either get a, di a burr grinder in there and just sort of grind it out, which you see me doing on the Manta and, and previously on the Escort. But this was a nice, it was, that's easy to just cut out a little square piece there, ready for it. And of course you want nice, super clean metal to be welding to. And that's really key to a tidy weld. Although the welder, I'll, have, I'll put some settings up of what the welder was set on. Uh, I'm using CO2 gas and 0.6 millimeter wire. Um, I find 0.6 a lot easier to control than 0.8. And then using the, uh, the poly strip discs, which are great for getting paint off without damaging the, the underlying surface. This is one of the great finds discovering those things. They, they, are, they work an absolute treat. They are really, really good. I'm also trying to keep this in real time as best I can so that you can see how long a little repair like this takes. I think the whole video is going to be about a quarter of an hour or so in length so it's not a huge amount of time to do it. It's just uh, getting on and the, and the little transitions between are just me picking up different tools and sort of wandering off to get something else so there's no, we're talking seconds between each gap rather than well, then you just have me see me wandering around the garage. So that's nice and bright and shiny, ready for some welding. Okay, so again, you'll notice as I cut this piece, I'm not messing around with cutting butt on this, as I'm cutting it to, to size, but I'm also leaving it long. You notice as I, yeah. Uh, Offer it up and then trim it to, to trim it to size. You'll you'll see I leave a little tab sticking out at the end. Now I did that on purpose because it's a lot easier to keep hold of the bit of metal uh, when you first put your initial tacks on. So I've got a an old screwdriver there. Those um what you call them the, the precision screwdrivers. I've just sharpened the point up on uses a scribe and that's working a treat because they're like a, they're a hardened metal on the end anyway so, quick snips quick test fit snip off again in a minute in a minute you'll I'll, I'll disappear in the background that's simply i'm just going off to hammer it flat on the vice and at this point i'm not overly concerned about it being a super super accurate fit as you see in one of my welding demonstrations I, I do like a little gap around the weld anyway because you, you short of a good penetration on the weld then so I, it is two schools of thought on the super tight fit uh, about the uh, the shrinkage and the problems with warpage personally I think that the, a small gap around the weld does work better <coughs> You can see here now I've got that little tab I've left hanging off the back of it. I can use that to hang on to. I'll also say at this stage is I neglected to wear gloves again for the welding. 
and, and that's foolish of me because the well in the UV light off the weld is not very good for, you, for your hands. Uh, so it's a good idea to well to wear gloves. There you go. There's me in the background disappearing now, hammering away on the uh, the piece just to flatten it out. Ready. Once it's in place and it's nice and smooth, use your fingers to to feel the edges of it. As long as it's all nice and possibly get a nice smooth edge, fantastic. Now in here as well, you'll uh, see I'm just getting things tacked up. Again, you can see what I got. I can keep hold of that now to get it to get the first tacks in. Unfortunately, the, the light from my welder lamp is is whiting out most of what's going on there. But hopefully you'll be able to see, get an idea of what I'm doing and just tacking the thing in place for now. Constantly checking to see that it's level as well, because the more level you can get that, the two bits of metal next to each other, the better it'll look when you go to grinding it off. Now you'll notice where it's pointing to there, that's a magnet, I'll oh, speak a magnet, I've just used that to uh, earth put my earth cramp on i found that worked quite well to uh, earth the welder again just making sure everything lines up take your time and line everything up nicely and um, you'll see at the end when, it, when it's ground off it's nice and smooth and looks tidy so here i've zoomed in a bit so hopefully the quality will uh, be close enough so, uh, good enough so you can see what i'm doing skipping around I'm not overly concerned about heat and distortion here because it's there's lots of tight edges to, to take up the distortion and it's not really a visible part of the car. But again, still sk skipping around the welds to try and minimise the, the heat. And just quick tacks as well. I'm not, I'm not putting loads of heat into the panel. So the weld has turned up just over half and the wire speed's just over half and you get a nice nice collection of tacks with that you can see there now that that's as well it's nice the heat hasn't traveled too far so just marking off now that little extra piece biro works a treat and again joking dremel just trim that little bit off Uh, and going gently, gently, you know, just, you notice I'm not just plunging the disc straight into the metal, just going backwards and forwards over the top, that way the discs last a lot longer. And now again, using the uh, joking Dremel just to clean up the edges, nice small blade, these, these are speed click, proper Dremel blades and a, and a speed click arbor. Quite expensive to buy and they are but it's not particularly cheap but they're worth every bit of penny because they do last very very well now using a carbide burr just to help clean things off those little carbide burrs work a treat as well they're, they're worth having to get in nice neat uh, small detail uh, grinding off that magnet is also doing another job there now those little the little splinters that come off these carbide burrs are razor sharp and go into your fingers so the magnet works treat to catch all of them and keep them under control 40 grit flap wheel now and when i'm using this i'm not putting much pressure i'm just hardly any pressure on it because the more you push on these the more heat goes into the panel and the, the more damage you do so just gently gently tickling away at it until you get the uh, to see, grind it down nicely and when you're grinding down like this if you hit either side before the other you, you'll see what I you don't see it with this actually this grinds down quite nicely but sometimes you see the welding I do they'll leave a, what looks like a little weld that I haven't ground down 
Well, at this point, it's grinding too far. What happens sometimes is if you haven't got the two pieces of metal perfectly lined up, I'm talking fractions of a millimetre out, you, you, you might as well stop. At this point, it's carrying on grinding because all you're doing at that point then is thinning out the actual steel. And you know, you don't want to be doing that. And if you're ever grinding like this and the steel turns blue, that is definitely time to stop. In fact, you've probably gone a little bit too far at that point, but if it goes blue, stop because that means it's gone really, really thin. Again, here, hardly any pressure. This is just gentle touch. Almost just the weight of the actual grinder itself. And there we've got the result. That's all ground back very nicely. Uh, a tiny repair. It's even, it's, you don't see any of the repair there. In fact, that's because of the, there's the two levels were perfectly lined up. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you don't think I was cheating by uh, using the same footage, but make a different video of it. It's just something I thought of in hindsight that I should have explained a bit more on the day. Um, there, there are another video on its way to do with the boot latch and uh, a few things have turned up in the meantime. So if I managed to complete that video, it's taken a little while. It, the, 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 preview, the, the video I've just released took a while to come out for the same sort of reason, waiting for the things to come in the post so I could carry on. And the same with the boot latch here. It's all done, it's all uh, up and ready and nickel plated and all and the, 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 the rubber has arrived for the bootlid as well. So that's all shut down properly on the on the rubber now. So the next video coming will be the boot latch being made and nickel plated. And the video following that will be me gapping the bootlid because everything's in place now for me to be able to do that. So please like and subscribe. Every interaction helps the videos push along. So thank you for your efforts in doing that. And thank you for subscribing. See you on the next one. This is my test piece I put up a couple of years ago now, so coming up for three years ago, where I checked different uh, epoxy primers and all sorts. And the one that's held up is the Halfords one, just there. And see where the, the bit that was corroded on the bottom right hand corner there? That's where I scratched a bit off a little while ago to check to see if the rust is actually creeping under the, well, under the uh, primer. And it's holding up still really good. Very impressive stuff, I've got to say. The rest of it, supposed to be two pack epoxies and all sorts, nothing didn't hold up at all. So Halford's well through primer, works a treat to hold back rust.